Okay, good evening, everybody, in our never-ending search to find the greatest guests to bring you more and more reports about Chabad around the world. We have with us Shoal David and Manu Wasserman. So Shoal David and Manu, first of all, thank you for staying up late there on the East Coast. It's after 10 o'clock. Really appreciate your time. And you are working, as we understand, with the kids in Florida. Give us a little background. Tell us your life story in 30 seconds or less. Where are you from? Who are you? And how'd you wind up in Florida? It's a great question. I only ask great questions. You'll know. Yeah. <laughs> so, first of all, I really appreciate you asking us to, to be on here. Well, we appreciate uh, you just, said yes right away. Most people give me a hard time. I know, time just, jo- just jokingly, I was like, I wonder who fell through that now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I really appreciate it. So um, I grew up in Buffalo Grove in uh, Chicago, and um, I went to public school. I eventually went to Ida Crown for high school. After Ida Crown, I went to Israel. I went to Mayanot in Jerusalem, and then I came back. I went to HTC in Skokie for two years. Uh, during that time, we got married. I went. Um, I got a uh, my degree in accounting. Worked in public accounting for a couple of years. We were living in Chicago. And then um, in 2020, um, we moved down to Florida and I started a real estate business with my brother-in-law. And now we do, you know, we have made a couple of businesses and we live in Florida. And then recently we, uh, thank God, have gotten much more involved in uh, in working with the teens and the seat. 18 and see kids and really just anyone really would say from the age of I'll just say six sixth grade through you know 12th grade and even a little bit post high school nice and Manya, let's give us a little bit of your background yes hi hi everyone thank you for asking us very nice um so yeah I'm originally from Milwaukee Wisconsin um we um grew up there I grew up there and then um Yeah, fast forward a little, Um, uh, like we got married in 2017. We were living in Chicago, going to Base Menachem for a little bit, obviously. And um, I think we actually first started working with um, Sunday schools um, with Riverwood in Chicago, um, Chicago, Illinois, um, and first got our taste over there and then have been um, continuing since. Yeah, we moved to... Florida in 2020 and I have been continuing with um, Sunday school and then got um, Shal and myself both, um, you know, got religious through um, C teen and Jewish youth groups. Um, So it's really cool to kind of like give back in this way. So Nitsi, so you talked about how you have your degree in accounting. Uh, Was that sort of your basic original life plan? You're just going to get a job, live in a community, show up in shul, and so on. What has it been like for you to sort of add on all of this communal work? How has that shifted in your life? Well, I just say the most the most obvious thing is it's extremely exhausting. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, ever since we started doing all the C teen stuff, I'd say I, you know I'm working you know probably twelve to fifteen hours a day. Um, and but I I do think there is this this idea. It's like if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Like I find myself to be extra productive and I'm able to use a lot of the stuff, a lot of my business, you know, practices. And I, I like kind of apply it a lot to the shluchas and to, you know, doing the different things with the teens, which I find help a lot. Like, for example, um, you know, I have a whole business, um, you know, relationship manager for my sales team. So I just implant the teens into this relationship manager and I have automations and I'm able to like be extremely effective because I totally, I understand how like the sales cycle works. So I just do the same thing trying to, you know, do it with, you know, Yiddishkeit and the teens. Um, But, you know, you asked the question about accounting and how I envisioned my life. I mean, I think that I, I was in a very interesting position just with my, you know, growing up and becoming more religious and being very involved, whether it was, you know, in Gan Yisrael, and then in C, you know, being very involved in CT and, you know, becoming, you know, really just, you know, someone who, thank God, has been able to be impacted a lot and wanted to impact others. Obviously, when you kind of go through the Chabad uh, program, you realize that, um, you know, I teach just the teens all the time. It's like, you don't need to be a rabbi to teach someone something. The rabbi always says, if you know Aleph, teach Aleph. It's not like meaning if you're if you're privileged enough to just know anything, it's it's your responsibility to teach that. 
So I think we've always, you know, even before we were doing anything in an official capacity, like I've always been learning with teens in my house. Um, and I, I think specifically, I'm like, I, I get the teens. I understand. I think I, I think I understand them um, to us to, I mean, I think I understand them honestly a lot. Just I, like, I get it. Like I was there, like, even though I was in Ida Crown, like I know, I know what they're doing. I get it. I understand why they do what they do. I know what they're thinking. And I understand what made me want to become more religious. And like, you know, everyone has a crossroads in life where they need to choose, like, am I going to go more this way or more that way? So, you know, obviously there are certain things that happened in my life that made me have that choice. You know, I didn't grow up this way and I chose to do it. So I understand why someone would want to make that choice. So I think that it's something that gives me, you know, hopefully a little bit more effective, you know, again, everyone to their own ability, but it's, I think it's a unique thing that we both have where we're able to understand them a little bit. And like I said before, I think like, you know, I always knew that having some type of communal responsibility, again, whether it's when it's official, unofficial capacity, it's very important. And at the end of the day, you're not going to, no one's going to find meaning in having a job. And if you, if you're trying to find meaning in having a job, you're going to be very upset. So you have to find the only real thing to find meaning in really is helping others. And so, you know, we, you, you got to do that regardless of whatever capacity, it's very important. So in your experience today, I mean, you talked about we remember when you were a teenager, with the advancement of technology, a kid can sit down in front of a video that the creator spent millions of dollars in flashy and so on. How do you get them out of their iPads? What has been the draw to get them to put their uh, Instagram down and come and participate in a C team program? So like one thing, one like central theme I've been talking about with the teens recently has been this idea of being real. Um, and, um, you know, everyone could ask Rabbi Epstein the story about his brother, about like, what does it mean to serve Hashem for real, you know, after, after the thing. But the, the idea is like, the thing I love about being real is that we're all, all on this call and everyone has a different definition of what it means to be real everyone each in their own capacity. And I think the thing with teens is they're not kidding. They know that the YouTube and all this stuff, they know it's just like a numbing device. Like no one, they're not like, they're not kidding themselves to think like, oh my gosh, like this is the, the real world is on the iPhone and this, like they understand that it's, a, everyone knows it's a waste of time. So like when you start to talk about like, what does it mean to be real? Like, I think that they, they understand, like they understand that they're lacking something and that there is a more real aspect to life than just like than just the phone. The problem is, is nowadays, like no one is no one is giving them access to what that realness is. Schools aren't, um, you know, honestly, even even he like I teach in Hebrew school here, like a lot of the teens are my Hebrew school kids. But I still find that just normal, even Chabad Hebrew school curriculum doesn't address like it's it's it, school is very hard. You need to have an outlet that like Judy, no one's going to do this if they think it's just boring and by rote and all this stuff. They need to, they, if you don't find it fun or something or see why you do it or just have the beauty in it, you're not going to, who's going to choose to do this? It's not, it's not easy. So the, but the ability to show them why is this so, the, why is this important to do? It's because look, everything else you're doing, you know, it's fake. You know that it's just the mind numbing and stuff, but to show them the real, the beauty in it. And what does it mean to be real? It means something that doesn't change, you know, just like your ancestors did and everyone, it stays the exact same thing. And I think even to a teen, if you explain it the right way, they see the beauty in it. And they're honestly interested in exploring that. What have you found to be some of your most successful programs? Maybe something that even surprised you about how successful it was. What have been some of the things that the kids kind of light up for that really are your go-to programs? For the past and partial trivia, you just said. Um, so again, we haven't honestly been doing this that much, but I would say like- but we, we recently wait, started. So I say like, um, so we really started about, I was just like, in all disclaimers, we pretty much started doing this in an official capacity about a month ago. Since okay. then- the stuff that we do uh, for about the past two, three years, every Friday, I, for the past three years, again, non-official, official capacity, whatever it is, I've gone to uh, the public schools on Friday afternoons. I stand outside on the corner and I hand out thala and tea lights and tefillin. Um, and then, so since kind of doing this in a more official capacity, we've, you know, been going to the high schools. Um, that's been very good. You know, very, like people are very interested. And honestly, the amount of like we did, we gave someone of our mitzvah on this on the corner of the high school a couple of Fridays ago. So that was very good. 
And then in show, you know, thank God we had, you know, about almost 30 people come to our forum event. Um, and, but I think the thing at the end of the, the thing that was the best was last night, we started doing like our weekly, um, just like hang out dinner and chill. Um, and, you know, we had like 20 teens come on a wow. Monday night. We had dinner, we played pool, we played, um, you know, basketball. We did like, you know, a, a little thing on the par show. And we listened to music and we hung out. And honestly, it was it was an awesome time. We we're there for about three, four hours. Wow. It was really it was really, really nice. Um, and I think again, part of it, like to me, the thing that really got me to want to explore Judaism more was having very good, like cool role models as a teen. Like it was like obviously there's rabbis, but like why what is a 13 year old going to connect to a 50 year old rabbi i mean just so it's just like there's such different lives but if you could find like another it's 50 guy, old right <laughs> i mean i'm could, not 50 find someone if you could find someone who's just a little bit older than you and is just like, like me. a person it's like it really makes you connect so what are some of the issues that you think kids today maybe more than when you were a teenager a few years ago that they that makes it really challenging for them. We always hear about kids today, the struggles today. It's not like it was. I guess every generation says our generation has challenges that you didn't have. What has maybe surprised you that the kids have expressed as being really difficult for them or maybe on the positive sense? What has surprised you about that? Yeah, I would say I would say like one thing that we didn't struggle with in school um, even public school was anti-Semitism. Right. Like that's I, like a lot more prevalent today than it like has someone been like Manya was Manya was telling me that like she knows this teen that goes to like the high school here. I mean, it's like like just to understand Boca, like there's four high schools here. Just within those four high schools, there's about a thousand Jewish teens in each high school. And each so I mean you're talking about four thousand just and that's just that's just high school teens. That doesn't count like the 15 middle schools. Um, and some have a, some as the middle schools are just as big. So like there's a teen that goes to this very big Jew, like again, very big high school, public high school here. And the administration asked him to stop wearing his Jewish star necklace because they couldn't protect him if something happened. Yeah, wow. they said it wasn't his responsibility, like wasn't their responsibility. Wow. So this yes. is something very different. So what do you tell a teenager like that? What do you tell a 15 year old kid? who's been told to hide his Jewish identity. So I, I think it, it's it's something that I think is, it's a very unique thing in this time. Like when we we're growing up, it was much more of like, you know, be proud to be, being proud to be a Jew. It's it's almost easier to be proud to be a Jew when you don't have these things of why it's, why the world is telling you it's negative to be a Jew. So I think focusing again on the, I don't, I personally don't, I don't know, if, I don't know if, you know, talking, a lot about the anti-Semitism is the solution. I think a lot of times focusing on the positivity and the more we focused on the light, I think just fo the focusing on the light can dispel the darkness itself um, and showing them why showing them why it's so important to be like, even in the face of adversity to show them how much more important it is to be proud about it. And you know, obviously don't back down or do anything. And, and really like the more proud we are, um, I, I just the one thing that comes to mind when I, when I talk to the kids about anti-Semitism and this, this is a very great, great on Purim because that's the whole, you know, that's like the whole story. So I just remember that just to, you know, when we were younger, my cousins, they had like this big Great Dane. And this thing was like massive. It was like a horse. And <laughs> you know, like I remember one time my cousin like got scared and ran and like walked away from the dog, but like a little bit faster. Like the dog sensed how scared she was and like, you know, like got on top of her and like broke her arm or something like, Please. but it's like and that, that, like that to me, it's like when they, like when they know you're scared, that's when they're going to come. Like the more, the more, the stronger we are, again, you don't get strong by just focusing on the fear and all that stuff. You get strong by focusing on what, on what, like, you know, thank God we have so many things to be grateful for, you know, we're, we're why we're, you know, being Jewish is an amazing opportunity. Um, we have so many, you know, so many obligations, we have so many responsibilities, but we have so many mitzvahs, which, you know, mitzvah just means a connection with so many connection points with Hashem. So to focus on those things, I think that, you know, hopefully that gives them a little bit, you know, more physic. But again, at the same, like to answer your question, I think the anti-Semitism, it is a very, very hard thing. And it's, it's a very, I think it's a very new thing that people like haven't actually dealt with 
in the public schools, you know, I don't know if it's ever been as like rampant as yeah. it is right now. Wow. So to these kids, if they're 15 or 14 or whatever, and they're in a public school and they don't necessarily come from a Torah oriented life, do they ever wonder like, so what does it mean to be Jewish other than to be hated by everybody? Uh, or are they right. trying to deny their Jewish identity or are they trying, is this prompting them to seek like, what is this thing that everybody hates me for? Right. I think it like the anti-Semitism piece works as a pro um, and obviously a con, but it works as a pro because they're not so affiliated with Torah Orthodox Judaism and they are more interested. Like, what is this? Like, you know, they don't know all the different sayings and slurs that are going around, um, you know, the they didn't media. even know all the nasty things people are calling. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so they're literally, they're more curious. And that kind of, you know, drives them more to people like us, you know, in the community to ask these types of questions too. And um, so it's, it's a pro in that sense. The one thing I, I, I've found that parents are very worried for their kids um, and a lot of parents reach out to me. Um, I would say every day I have a new parent reach out to me and like even the kids of all ages. I mean, like I would say like teens of all ages, not just a, not just a middle schooler who relies on their parents for logistics purposes, but like an you know, like a high schooler who maybe has their license. And it's just like, they are so worried about their kids just with everything. Like, and again, you have, not only do you have the anti-Semitism in schools, you just have like all, they, they just teach so many things that are against the Torah. So some, so they really are just, and they like, they just are very worried for their kids and they're very, the parents are very appreciative to have a, like a place where their kids can go and have like a fun group. Again, like, I think the purpose of C teen is to have, like, there's a place, there's a place for everything, right? There's a place for Hebrew school. There's a place for yeshiva. There's a place for school, but like to have like a, a something that is associated with, with fun and like Judaism in a very fun way, I think is extremely important. I think that's something that has been missing like in most generations. Yeah. Something that like, I think people associate Judaism with a lot of laws, um, restrictions. Or have had very bad times. The thou Judaism. shalt not. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And see kids and see teen. Really one of the main themes and focus is the fun. You know, all of our events are focused around kind of more of a fun activity or theme. And we throw some Torah in there as well. But like, you know, the the whole vibe is like fun. Fantastic. Okay. Well, Shoal and Manya, thank you so much for taking this time. Thank you for your commitment. It's inspiring to hear. You could just, you know, get a job and worry about yourself and your 401k and your car payments and the fact that you've committed all of this time and especially as you point out at this time over the last few months where anti-semitism has seemed to come out of nowhere and from every direction even from people who we used to think that we could trust and who were in positions of authority and these kids now have a safe place and see kids and see teen you're saving their jewish identity and saving their jewish lives so unless anybody has a question they want to unmute and jump in. Otherwise, we're going to let them get back to work because they don't sound like they sleep very much. So I'm sure they got more work to do. We thank you so much for being thank with you very us. Much. Two questions. Two Question questions. Uh oh, here you go. You mentioned that you had a very nice, relaxing time when people play pool and basketball. Do they walk to your center or are you a neighborhood type of thing or somebody need to schlep them to you? Yeah, that's a good question. So most of our kids um, are going to be in our, our surrounding community. So I think some were walking, but I think most were draw like um, are driven by their parents, like middle school. Like in, Flor in Florida, it's like if you're living in the suburbs in Chicago, it's like you have to drive everywhere. So like everything is like a 20, everything is like at minimum of like a 10 minute drive unless you live like right next door. So like most people are driving, most people I would say are driving. And we have, a, we have a very big contingency of teens that come on Shabbos. Also, I think a majority of the, them probably walk, but um, during the week we have like kind of all over, people come from as far as, you know, 10, 15, 20 minute drive away. Okay. And you're coming from the Midwest. How did you adjust to live in Florida? It's very different. Culturally, uh, mm -hmm. I, the, everything is different. 
Yeah, I definitely miss the Midwest people, and we do visit, but um, we got a lot of fans and air conditioners. For the <laughs> um, you don't, that you was do, how do you live without minus five and frozen toes and snow? And I cold miss and it. Man. I had to get rid of all my boots. It was very difficult. Um, <laughs> but no, we were focused on our community, on our family. Um, you know, being an Orthodox lifestyle is almost like insular in a sense. Um, but yeah, we adjusted. It's still America. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you so have Walmart. They take American money. You don't need a passport to show up. They take dollars. Look at that. <laughs> uh, they have Walmart. They have yeah. Walmart. What else could you need? Beautiful. Okay, Shol and Manya, thank, thank you so you. much for spending the time. I really appreciate it. Akasha v'samer. We'll say good night to everybody tomorrow night. We'll do some Haggadah insights. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Thanks again. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, and Atzlach Harab. All right.